Living in exile is a very difficult thing. As I woke up this morning and was reading through the scriptures, I couldn't help but be reminded of what a challenging circumstances we find ourselves in when we have a sense of exile. And for many of us, we have some sense of that right now. Being in exile isn't just simply being cut off from your homeland, it's also being cut off from your home, from those who are dearest and closest to you. And right now we find ourselves in a situation where even if we are at home, there are many people we may not be able to see. Just yesterday I was in conversation with a very good friend of mine whose father's just been given a diagnosis of cancer, yet he can't go and visit him in case, lest he do, when he come home he bring the virus, which could then affect his wife, who's also in recovery from that same challenging disease. And that is now part of the world we find ourselves in, having a sense of exile. In the Psalms it talks about how can we sing the Lord's songs in foreign soil. On Sunday, like many of you may have done as well, I was in my living room singing songs in a virtual community with my church, doing something very familiar but in a different way. And there is again that sense of disconnect and that longing to want to be with those who are closest to you and who you love the most. And those are just some of the questions that we're facing right now as we have to deal with the whole issue of coronavirus. The former chief rabbi of England, Jonathan Sachs, when talking about the subject of exile, raises a very interesting question, however. He says, how was it possible for the Jews, even though they were in exile for 2,000 years, to maintain a sense of identity, to understand who they are, not to be cut off from their roots? Now, where many of us are familiar, or you may well have heard of, the festival of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, what not so many of us are aware of is that there is another festival which is celebrated 10 days before, which then leads into the 10 days of awe or repentance. And that festival, the prior one, is actually a marking of creation itself, a time when we celebrate that God, the Creator, created. He created humanity and He put us here. And it's also a time where we remember, therefore, that God is sovereign, that He is King. And He is King over everyone and everything. Now, the implications of this, Sachs says, are profound. It introduced into the psyche the sense that no human ruler has any ultimate authority in this world. It allowed the prophets to criticize the kings because they weren't embodied, embodied with that ultimate authority. It meant that the people could disobey immoral orders because there was a moral order that God had given. The sovereignty of God means that there are moral limits to the use of power. It was a time therefore, when they recalled who God was, not just simply as a king, but as the king, and then also as their king. This meant that wherever they were, he was their sovereign. No matter what land they were in, no matter where they were living, no matter who they were separated or what they were separated from, they could still be connected to the sovereign and the ruler of this world. And all of us need to recover that sense of identity again. The question is, who is king and who will be leading us through this time? Not just in terms of the wisdom that we need to see imparted to human government, which is a very valid form of expression, control, especially at a time like this, but who do we ultimately look to for our help in a time of distress? This morning I read through the manuscript of a book that is about to come out by a colleague of mine and friend, John Lennox. In it, he addresses the challenge of the coronavirus. He makes the point that the word corona is the Latin for crown because the virus itself resembles and looks like it's in the shape of a crown. Now, that then raises then that further question. <laughs> Who is going to be crowned king of our life, especially in a time where we have so many questions and where we have so many doubts? Another friend of mine, Martin Lazel, wrote a song in which he had the words, a crown of thorns he wore for us and crowned us with eternal life. It's a beautiful reminder of the fact that Jesus Christ is the King, that he is crowned with glory, but before that he was crowned with a crown of thorns and went to the cross in order to be able to give us hope, even in times of despair, and open up a way that we can talk to him and bring all of our concern and all of our care to him. We need, uh, I'm reminded again this morning, that we are not determined by economic forces or psychological drives or genetically encoded impulses. Those aren't the things which control us, as Sachs says. Instead, as he beautifully sums up, we worship a God who knows our fears, hears our prayers, believes in us more than we believe in him, forgives us when we fail, lifts us up when we fall, and gives us strength when we find ourselves in despair. 
May God bless you this day as you continue to seek him.